Welcome to Triathlon Training Explained. We've gone into how to find your VO2 max in a recent video. So now you know how to get your numbers. How do you go about improving them? Yeah, now part of having a high VO2 max comes down to genetics. But you'll be pleased to hear that there are ways in which we can still increase that magic number. Well, I hope you are ready for some hard work. Now, don't be put off by these letters and numbers VO2 max. It can all sound rather complicated, but essentially, we're just looking to get you fitter. But before we crack on with that, let's just quickly explain exactly what your VO2 max is. Yeah, it's basically shorthand for the maximum rate of oxygen consumption, V being the volume, O2 being the oxygen. And to calculate it, you actually also include your body weight. So it gives you an equation of millilitres of oxygen per kilo of body weight per minute. And you can test this in a physiology lab to get a very accurate result. But there are several other methods too, of which actually Mark and Fraser went into detail in the recent video of what is VO2 max. So check that one out. And whilst you're there, why not give us a like and a follow? Yeah, and your VO2 is essentially your engine and how efficient you are at utilising the oxygen available. Now, this isn't the only component to being able to run fast, but it's certainly a very clear measurement of your fitness and therefore can be improved with training. And it's actually very important for us as distance runners. Now for the important part, you know how to work out your VO2, so it's time to look at improving it. And the rates of improvement are going to vary. Say, if you're someone who's not been running for months and you're getting up off the sofa for the first time in a while, then you're gonna see quite impressive improvements really quickly. If, however, you're the other end of the spectrum and you're already running regularly and you've been doing this consistently, then you're still gonna see improvements. They're just gonna be less obvious. Yeah, I'm not gonna to lie to you here or beat around the bush. VO2 max sessions hurt, but that being said, you get a pretty good return for your investment. As for the amount of time spent in the hurt locker, you get a pretty good return in fitness. Basically, what we're trying to say is they're well worth it. There are various styles of sessions which you can adopt to improve your VO2, all of which are going to have you working at or very close to that intensity. When it comes to the longer reps, then you're going to be working slightly under that VO2 max intensity. The shorter reps, on the other hand, you're going to be working at and sometimes even above that intensity. But the one thing they all have in common is they're going to be broken into intervals where you've got periods of working really hard for a short period of time, followed by an active recovery. Yeah, so we've actually helped you out today. We've picked out three of our favourite sessions. <laughs> now I use that term favourite rather loosely because, well, you'll see. Um, before we do crack on with those sessions, do make sure that you are well warmed up beforehand so that you're ready to run at VO2 max pace. Yeah, and we're going to be talking about your VO2 max pace quite a bit throughout this video. And if you've done a physiology lab test, and you can get your pace from that. If you haven't, then you can actually go and do a six minute all out effort. Just make sure you've done a thorough warm up first and take your average pace from that. It's time to take a look at the sessions then. And this first one is known as 30-30s. And it was my coach's favourite. So it's fair to say that I have well and truly tried and tested this. It was actually devised by French exercise physiologist Véronique Villard when he discovered that working at your VO2 max pace for 30 seconds, followed by 30 seconds jog recovery, repeatedly until failure, was a great way to improve your overall fitness. So for this one, you just want a nice thorough warm up and then it's straight into the main set. I actually measure out the section that I need to run hard and then I use my turnaround point midway through the recovery section and it's quite a mind game this session is you're always trying to just push one more a rep out before you don't make that 30 second beep and it's a good marker of where you're at with your fitness so ideally if you can manage to get this session in once a week consistently and you can increase the amount of reps you're doing every couple of weeks say by two and then once you get to eight weeks it's ready to take the next step up and actually increase it to 60 seconds on 60 seconds off. So say you've reached 24 30 30s, then realistically you want to still be obviously hitting the same pace, but try to do 12 lots of 60 on 60 off. If that's a bit much for the first week, then drop it down to 10 and you can start to increase again. And personally, I must admit, I did dread this session, but that was mainly because our coach would change the goalposts. But if you're consistent with your improvement, you'll definitely see yourself getting much stronger. 
Well, this session needs little introduction, really. Heels are great for making you work hard without really having to worry about your pace. Now, due to gravity, we naturally all just go a little bit slower up hills than we would on the flat for the same given intensity or effort. Now, for this session, I'm going to suggest you do your warm up on the flat or an undulating terrain and plan to finish at the bottom of your chosen hill. Now, that chosen hill needs to be steep enough that you're going to end up working hard on it, but not so steep that you can't find a Rhythm. It also needs to be long enough that you can get in a good two to three minute rep on there so you can really target that VO2 max development. Now a good example session to start out with is four to five lots of two minutes going hard uphill and then recovering on the downhill. Now I'd advise trying to make a mental note of what you get to after each of those two minute efforts and trying to get to that same point or further on each of the subsequent reps. Now the idea of this whole session is that you'll feel absolute toast at the end of it. If you don't, then just add on an extra rep and as the weeks go by, do the same. Keep adding on extra reps until you're at a point that you feel like you can start doing three minute reps rather than two minute reps. Now I absolutely love this session because of the simplicity of it. All you need is a timer, a good hill, a good gradient, and it's hard not to work. There's no need to make things complicated here, just hard. Yes, you're gonna need a really thorough warm up as you've got to be ready to run at pace. We are actually upping that intensity a little bit further. You're gonna be touching on close to lactic threshold and maybe even a little bit above your VO2 max pace. Yeah, we've picked out a pretty meaty one here. We've got five lots of 1K with 400 meters jog recovery between. Now those kilometer reps should be at a pace that you can just about maintain them for those five reps. Yeah, we said this is going to be pretty hard. <laughs> but you can mix it around a little bit. That's a kind of basis session, so you can change the distance that you're doing per rep or the number of reps. So say you might want to do 800s instead of Ks, and then you could aim for six or seven, for example. Yeah, well, that should be enough for you guys to go away with and play with. Uh, just pick one of those sessions per week, and trust me, they are physically and mentally demanding, but really pay off in the long run. Yeah, well, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully you like the sessions. Give us a like and a follow at GTN.